let us resume our discussion by victorian poet matthew arnold matthew arnold states regarding poetry as poetry is a criticism of life under the circumstances laid down for such criticism by the laws of poetic truth and poetic beauty poetry is a criticism of life criticism comments it is the expressing of the comments over life poetry is a criticism of life and what are the circumstances the circumstances are laid down by the laws of poetic truth and poetic beauty two attributes are essential here poetic truth should be there and poetic beauty should be there in that criticism and this kind of criticism is nothing but poetry according to matthew arnold poetry hence matthew arnold describes poetry as the most beautiful impressive and widely effective mode of saying things and hence its importance the way of saying things which things the most beautiful impressive and widely effective mode of saying things and also conveying the importance of those things thereby as we move a little further towards the poet isra pound how isra pound describes deliberates over the definition of poetry isra pound says that poetry is about as much a criticism of life as red hot iron is a criticism of fire it is a criticism of life according to isra pound to state simply the next important poet thomas gray who is held greatly for the elegies that he had contributed to the english literature thomas gray according to thomas gray poetry is thoughts that breathe and words that burn poetry is thoughts that breathe and words that burn ultimately what is significant here is that the burning words should be transformed into breathing ideas for the poetic composition right where the poetic the the burning words are transformed into the breathing ideas that kind of literature is called that kind of composition is the poetic composition now after this 19th century definitions of poetry now we travel further towards the 20th century definition of poetry as we all know that 20th century was the age of the growth of scientific spirit it was the age of industrial revolution it was the age of advancement in the field of industrial developments and hence it was the age of the scientific spirit one renowned name who belonged to this age is the poet t s eliot how he defines poetry poetry according to t s eliot was more a work of intellect than rather than of sheer imagination imagination was not the only important attribute behind the composition of a good poem according to t s eliot intellect equally important for composing a good poem and hence his definition of poetry st he starts defining poetry in the negative terms how he says he defined poetry not as a turning loose of emotions poetry is not a turning loose of emotions according to ts eliot it is not a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings as it was stated by william wordsworth and even it is not an expression of poet expression of personality of the poet or it is not an expression of personality rather it is an escape from personality what it is it is an escape from personality according to ts eliot and then there are some modern trends that they describe poetry according to the modern trends poetry was in the modern trends according to the modern trend poetry was composed in free verse free verse 
free verse means the verse or the stanza pattern having no rhyme scheme or meter no essential rhyme scheme or no essential meter is there in the free verse that is the free verse stanza pattern of composing a poem but the significant name in the romantic tradition of america robert frost the american poet robert frost comments over writing free verse or comments over composing poem in a free verse as how he states he states that writing free verse is like playing tennis without the with the net down the net is down and you are playing tennis means it is uh, essentially it it's easy it's it's comparatively easier to play tennis with the net down and composing poems in free verse is as simple an activity as playing tennis with the net down means it is simple it is little bit easier to compose poetry in free verse according to the american poet robert frost however these different definitions these varying definitions of poetry that we have seen here but we cannot deny the fact that poetry has been the much loved discussed adored debated and read form of literature poetry is the most enjoyed form of literature or literary creation until right now and as you might have known that many of the proverbs that are in existence or many of the maxims many of the maxims that are in existence these are the great lines of some great poems so the importance of poetry is unbelievably the importance stands tuned the importance of poetry goes nowhere the poetry is important it was important it is important and it will remain important in the ages to come ultimately the greatness and value of the poetry can be defined can be stated in the words of a renowned name stephen spender stephen spender he describes great poetry as the poetry is always written by somebody straining to go beyond what he can do what is great poetry according to stephen spender the poetry great poetry is always written by somebody who is straining means who is trying who is trying to go beyond what he can do means the ultimate efforts to look for something beyond our reach straining to go beyond what he can do or even she can do so this is the ultimate definition of poetry that is the greatness and value of poetry here ends the discussion over the definition the various definitions of poetry and i hope that you very new students to this form of literature or this form of study uh, might have got very well uh, you might have learned these definitions and the different attributes of poetry as they are stated by different famous poets here thank you students for listening patiently if you have any queries if you want to discuss something your queries are always welcome have a nice day all of you happy learning bye